being hyper productive and focusing on the right things is undeniably one of the biggest superpowers you can have as an entrepreneur. In today's video, I break down exactly how I organize my calendar, what I do on a daily and weekly basis, and how I conduct deep work. Let's go. What is up guys? Welcome to Heist, the channel where we break down how to build and scale physical products businesses. But today's video is a little bit different. We're not gonna get into any of the tactics or strategies around building a physical products business, but more importantly, the foundational elements for how I organize my calendar, how I'm productive, and how I conduct deep work in my business on a daily and weekly basis. The inspiration for this particular video actually stems from a story that a good buddy of mine in this space, Tom Wang, posted on his Instagram stories about a book he was reading, Deep Work, by Cal Newport. That led to an exchange we had via DM just about how we orchestrate calendars, and I figured it would be a good topic so you can see behind the curtain into my world a little bit and how I think about my calendar. Before we dive in and look at my actual Google Calendar, a couple kind of key foundational elements for how I think about productivity. First, I think one of the biggest fallacies I've seen in modern corporate life and in most entrepreneurs' life is that they think that being busy is work. And I simply just think that that's BS. A lot of people are busy, but that doesn't mean that they're busy on the right things, it doesn't mean that they're focused, and it doesn't mean that they're productive. A lot of people have unnecessary meetings, they use unnecessary thought space on things. They metal work so it's never quite focused. They do a little bit, then they get distracted, and it just becomes this long day where not a lot happens. Over the last year, I've been hyper-focused on how do I define precisely what I need to have happen and how do I institute that into my calendar, which we'll get into in a second. But busy work is not work. You definitely have to break that mindset. The second is that leverage and focus is literally everything. Not all work tasks are created equal. I fundamentally believe that each day is similar to a matchbook in the sense that there's only so many decisions that we can make or so many matches we can strike before we simply are ineffective. And so selecting precisely how we use those mental matches is incredibly important. And you need to focus on those high leverage activities that you do once, but pay themselves back in perpetuity for the days, weeks, months, years to come for you and your business. And then finally, I kind of feel like you need to ruthlessly defend your time and your calendar. I think a lot of people take meetings or spend time on things and people because they wanna be nice. Or more importantly, they're afraid to say no. This is our lives we're talking about. And focusing on those meaningful, high leverage activities, both in our professional life and what we do on a work basis, as well as what we dedicate to our free time is so important. And I think one of the other mental frameworks is that you need to not be afraid of saying no, and you need to not be afraid of prioritizing yourself and your calendar. So with that foundation set, let's dive into my computer and walk through what the last week looked like. And more importantly, to see how I structure my day-to-day -day calendar. All right, so this is my actual Gmail calendar for my business. And I think the first important thing to understand about the structure here, and you may pick this up, but literally just like the Nine Inch Nails song, every day is exactly the same. Obviously the meetings might shuffle, the activities might shuffle, but I've got automated recurring weekday meetings that are set up as well as some meetings on Sundays that are literally like clockwork. So my life is structured in a cadence like a metronome where I kind of know exactly what I need to do both physically and mentally every single day. So the first thing that I've got is a recurring task every weekday morning from 7 to 9 a.m. that you'll notice here is sleep, YouTube, and focus. First of all, I don't wake up with an alarm clock. I haven't woken up with an alarm clock in well over a year. You want to talk about living amazingly. 
Um, not hearing that buzz of an alarm clock all but maybe like 10 times a year is pretty freaking awesome. Um, so I wake up anywhere from like 6.30 to 8.30. It kind of depends on the day. But generally speaking, I like to have that time carved out in the morning to kind of do what I feel is right that day, depending on my energy. So I can either sleep in a little bit if I want. I can lay in bed and watch YouTube stuff, uh, which I love to do. And I could also kind of create some focus time. I generally like to meditate for at least 30 minutes minutes prior to the workday and that's really just kind of thinking about um, nothing as much as possible but really kind of focusing on gratitude and the things that matter in my life and clearing my head. So that happens every single morning. Uh, the most important part of the day is really this critical task work from 9 to 11 a.m. and this is really what I think of as my deep work time. This is no phone, no distractions. I'm literally in my office during this two-hour block and the magic happens during this two hours. Almost anything important that I do in any of my businesses or anything in my work life happens during this two hour block. And the important thing about this critical task work section is it's almost entirely high leverage activities. So it's either driving sales, traffic, conversion for my business. Maybe I'm expanding to new products. Maybe I'm looking at international markets, new channels, new pay-per-click strategies. It's activities that are driving more money in my Amazon businesses. That's one element of the high leverage activity. The second is, is I'm creating training content for my team. So I'm shooting Loom videos or I'm setting up tasks that can scale and automate over time such that I'm removing myself from elements of the business that are repetitive and that can be done on a recurring basis while I sleep by my team overseas. I may also use this time to identify vendors or seek out vendors that can also institute value within my business and create high leverage impact. For the non-physical products brand side, this is also the time where I'm thinking about videos, I'm thinking about partnerships, I'm thinking about how I can scale my personal brand, my content, and leverage that because the cool thing about content and media is that you do it once and somebody could be watching it for days, weeks, years ahead. And I've really understood the value of that snowball impact since creating this YouTube channel a little over a year ago. So this is really the critical time period of the day and I highly suggest even if you've got a day job, I get that, hey Adam, I don't, I've got a day job, how the hell can I do this, totally get it. Um, this really should be your critical time that you work on your Amazon business after hours. This is maybe 6 to 8 p.m. This is non-negotiable. This is zero effing around time. This is hunkering down like it's the playoffs and focusing for two hours. And that's really what I consider my work day is this two hour block. After that, I think it's incredibly important to get outdoors in nature at least once a day. Myself, in the warmer months, I like to get out and mountain bike. Here's some video this week from one of my mountain bike rides for context, but I think getting out in nature, pushing yourself, suffering a little bit is important. In the winter, that will typically be skiing is what will happen in the winter. And then after that, I actually like to kind of schedule some more downtime similar to the morning that's flexible. I'm usually kind of eating and watching YouTube, kind of surfing the web, dinking around. Uh, this is what I would call kind of my surf casual time. Most people would do this in their workday and consider it work. I kind of block this out. I don't consider it work, uh, but I consider it an important element and block in the day. And then the next thing that happens is, is I, I basically structure two hours a day when people can book meetings. There's exceptions to this, right? Like we'll see here, uh, I'm looking at acquiring potentially an Amazon brand and the time that worked for three of us to meet up was, was 1 to 2 p.m. So I'm going to kind of adjust my lunch to fit that. Uh, but generally speaking, I like to block my meetings from 2 to 4 p.m. How I do that is anytime I'm setting up a meeting with somebody, I will send them a Calendly link, which will basically give them access to my calendar and they can kind of orient, hey, what's the day and time that works best for me? If somebody needs to be outside of that, usually because of international schedules and stuff, we can obviously accommodate. But generally speaking, I like to cluster my meetings then. I'm coming off a lunch. That's time for me to just kind of chill and be more in listen conversation mode, which doesn't require a lot of mental energy. And then it's really the back half of the day, that last hour of the day that I'm doing more operational stuff. So obviously focusing on high leverage work, high leverage activities is critically important and that's really what this time block in the morning is for. But you still gotta shovel shit to get to the gold, so to speak. So there's emails that need to happen. I've gotta get my team set up, things like that. So I'm typically doing all that operational work at the end of the day. 
setting up tasks and click up for the team, responding to emails, kind of doing more of that admin type activity. The reason I do this at the end of the day is because I burnt more matches throughout the day and I may not have many left. So I don't really want to use consequential brain power at the end of the day. That's why I kind of structure uh, that period at from four to five. And then sometimes it'll slip behind that and I'll do some other stuff. I might shoot some videos. Like obviously this is pretty flexible, right? But I kind of look at it like I'm working two hours a day and then the rest of it is kind of filler um, that either aligns with my lifestyle and how I want to live my life or it's structured such that I can still continue to do those things that need to pursue the business for that are non-high leverage but don't impact the time and mental energy that I have during this period. And then the other thing I think that's interesting too is I've got a pretty fluid schedule. So uh, I think a lot of people will look at my Instagram which is at Heist Labs, by the way, and you'll see a ton of like riding photos and stuff. I like to ride as much as I can usually every day. I like to golf a lot during the week too. But I also like to work on the weekends too. So Sundays is a big day. You can see today I'm in the middle of building an Amazon course. More information to come on that soon in the next couple of weeks. I think you guys will be stoked for it. But basically, I did a full course build here. Uh, I do all of my weekly planning on Sundays. So I spent a couple hours really kind of thinking about the previous week thinking about what we need to do in the week ahead. And that prepares us well for my team meeting. I've got a team in the Philippines. Uh, so their Monday morning is basically uh, Sunday evening. So I like to have those discussions, those team meetings, which you do via Slack. So it's a lot more scalable and we can multitask. We do that on Sundays. And then I typically shoot my YouTube videos uh, Sunday evening. So you can see here now it is 9 p.m. So I'll cut this. It'll take me probably 45 minutes to edit. I'll schedule it to go out on Monday and that's that. Um, but you can see here, I've got basically like four meetings next week. I've got a M&A meeting that I really want to have. And then I've got two other meetings that afternoon, one with Graham, one with Gabriel, both of them. I'm super stoked. I want to have those conversations. That's why I opened up my calendar. And then I've got some kind of operational meeting that I got to do on Wednesday, but it's a pretty clear calendar. And again, it's going to be like rinse and repeat Groundhog Day. The week after that is going to be very similar. Uh, I don't even have meetings set up yet. The week after that's very similar. So this is how I structure my life. I feel like it enables me to do superhuman things and have multiple projects going on at once, but it's working on stuff that matters. It's be living a fulfilled, balanced life, doing things I wanna do when I wanna do them. And it's having discussions and meetings that are impactful and that I wanna have, not because they're forced on my calendar and absorbing my time. So guys, I know this was a little bit different. Hopefully you got some value out of it. Check out this next YouTube video in the feed if you want to see more heist. Otherwise, I've got an absolutely insane, insane video coming out next week. So hit subscribe, hit the notification bell if you haven't already. It's going to be awesome. Until next time, guys, cheers.